I put that bolt I or that uh, yeah bolt through there, and I put two nuts down here, locked them together, and I tightened them enough to where the flats lined up, so I could put my jaws on two of them. I have a lock nut up here and a, a lock washer and a regular washer. Put the indicator on it. What I did was I loosened this just a little bit, and I tapped it with a hammer. I have this hammer uh, that's soft, and I'd tap it, and I could get it within a hundred thousandths that way because of my hole. It's off a little bit, but uh, I used a three-eighths drill, so the rod is 373, or 363, so 375, it ain't much off. It was just a hair bigger, so I could tap this and get it close. It's within a hundred thousandths. So now I can lock this up. I think I did, but I'll check. I can lock this up, and now I'm ready to cut it. When I had this over under the drill press, this piece, and I uh, drilled it for the bolt, it was just a hair bigger. And I spun it on there, and I'm looking at it, and I thought, you know, you could make rollers for your mower. You know, for under the deck, they have them little rollers, but they're always cut way back in here. You could make it out of this stuff. I mean, it'd be a lot more than what they sell, probably. You could probably buy them cheaper. But uh, I'll tell you what, man, you could make that. And as long as you had the bolt right and everything, you need a shoulder bolt, which you could lock on another nut and put red lock tight on it, red lock tight. And you could actually machine this across and then like taper it down here around it and on this side. And you could make a set of those rollers. I'm thinking, man, would that be neat? You could make yours uh, as thick as theirs. Uh, like I said, it would cost you a lot more. But I've got this ready to cut. Uh, let's try it. The finished gear on the outside is three uh, three inches, 212. So say three and a quarter inches. That's what I'm going to kind of, whoop, bump the camera. Uh, 312 thousandths so I figure three and a quarter inches that's a little bigger so I just want to cut that then I'm going to face it off and then I think I'll cut it on down to my size I want to get this cut and this faced get just get them straight then I'll start working it down and getting it to where I want it I wanted to see this uh, is the piece you know that I made I made it extra big oh man it's uh, three eight hundred and about 58, 59. Yeah, 359. I got to go down to around three and a quarter. So I got a lot on there. I got plenty to clean up because I knew it was going to be running out. And the can I used to pour that is perfect. So see how it cuts. I could run it a little, probably a little faster. But I'm, I just want to, I'm going to take about 10 off the side. I just want to see how it cuts. Oh, that stuff's going to cut nice. I got a carbide tool in there. Tool steel would cut this, plastic. I mean, there is so much you could use this stuff for. I'm glad I come across it. Yeah, I can, I can even probably speed it up. Let's see. Yeah, see, it's only hitting. Boy, it looks beautiful. Uh, all these marks you can see if the camera picks it up is from when it was around the can. The oil and that, it left, you know. But as soon as I cut it, it's solid. It's nice. Wow. Let me speed it up and see where I'm at. Well, first of all, let's see what speed I'm on. I have a thing up here I can put on and check it. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's about 411, 000, or 411 RPM. Let's go up a little higher, the next speed higher. Because that plastic, I know it's going to cut easy. Okay, that's... Uh, about 1125 RPM. So I'm going to take another 10 in. Oh, baby, it peels it right off. Wow. <laughs> Uh, 
not take a 15 uh, 15 thousandths per side just to try it I never like to load my lathe, uh, lathe up I mean I could cut a lot heavier but I got the time you know I don't know I, I after pouring all this and the expense of that plastic I do not want to mess it up another 15 Put my feet on, just let it go. It looks like it snowed here. Another 15. take it back and just let it take a free cut see how it is it, it's not taking anything off one more 15 thousandths Is that look nice? Didn't clean up a little bit there, but I mean it's way big. I'm getting dirt on it. <laughs> I can see a little bit of seam air from the can, but I, I got a good ways to go yet. And I'm telling you what, that is nice. That is solid plastic too. Wow, it's rough, <laughs> but it does it. Man, it's uh, the cuttings. <laughs> Looks like it snowed. Hey, if my name was uh, Edward. I'd be Edward Snowden. <laughs> Hillary Clinton won't be sending him a Christmas card. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Look at peel that right. Oh, is that neat? Look at that! Wow, that cut that right off good. So let me get this cut and uh, this faced off, and then we'll see what it looks like. I think what I'll do is face it off next, then cut this down and get it to my size I need. I faced this off down to this washer I have right here and with this face and this face it looks like a grinding wheel but it's really nice plastic beautiful uh, I was forgetting I gotta put this hub on here so I'll lay it out over to here and cut it down that far this is one inch and it just happened when I put my washer on there and then there's a lock washer and then a nut the lock washer is exactly one inch so I could leave it a little bit bigger, but I'll go down probably close to an inch and uh, straighten it out. It'll be good enough. Then the critical thing will be the outside diameter where the teeth are going to be. That'll be critical. I can cut that next. Then I can turn it around and grab it right here and face it off. And uh, then this hub that I'm making on this side I can turn it around, grab it by that hub, and uh, then I can bore it out. I make sure the outside is running true, really true. And I decided to take a measurement here and maybe make mine two or three thousandths bigger because then I just like it better. You know, just a couple thousands shouldn't hurt. So that's where I'm at now. I've got it all cut. I even cut this little undercut here. I got this just right. I mean, it, it's not real, real critical. I laid it out, and from this line over, the thickness 
from this end to where I want to cut it off is about 340 thousandths. And when I laid it out, I found out what I have left, I could probably make another one. Because, let's see, it's uh, 590. So it's like 40, 50 thousandths. Uh, needs another 50 thousandths, which I could add to this side. I could actually make a little aluminum piece for here, cut the other side, and keep fitting it until I got it really, really close. Put a little uh, instant glue, put it in a press and press it, then cut it off where I need it. So to save everything I can so I could possibly make another one out of this, I am going to take a hacksaw blade and cut down through there. I don't want to use my parting off tool, it'll take too much. But a hacksaw blade will work. But I sanded it and I got a couple little wee imperfections there, but that's all right. Because my metal gear on it, and it's made out of metal, I seen a place here, right here, where there's almost like it was a little bit of a hole or something. I don't understand what that is. It's it could be a couple little wee chips on that on the teeth, but it's not very bad. And if that uh, I go to do it, maybe I'll look and say if this is a bad worst hole, I could make my slot right there on it, because the rest of it come out solid, nice. There's a little one, but it's out here on the edge. But it looks like that one on the top right there is the worst. I cut it down through here with the uh, hacksaw and I have enough for, I can put teeth on this one and this one, separate it there. I cut it clear down through to this bolt. Then I, you know, measured this one, laid it out, and then what I had left, I put a shoulder down in there, but it's not, it's not far enough. So I could always add to it or bore it out a little bigger, put an aluminum one in there, would work. And when I plunged that, I used my cutting tool, and you can see it doesn't go very deep. It only goes right to there. It's more of a plunging tool than a cutoff. So uh, I need a longer one. But I have some made uh, out of tool steel. I can use it. When I cut that, I plunged it a couple times, and you can see this little wee piece I missed. And that's like a washer. You could actually make plastic washers out of this. If you needed like a shim, a thin shim, uh, it's amazing. This, this plastic, look at that. Wow, there it broke. But you can see it's paper thin. And that would work. Uh, they had plastic stuff like this, I know, up at the plant when they worked on machines and that to, to kind of shim things a little bit. You could make it thicker, thinner. It would work. I mean, it wouldn't be to seal like, uh, you know, gasket material, but for shims, it'd be great. You could make shims out of this. So that's where I'm at now. My next step is get tool steel so I can cut this on down in further. This had a one inch washer, which worked perfect. I'll try to get down in there until I get to that one. I got to watch my jaw there, but I got enough room. I could go right in right to that washer. And I mean, you'll feel it when you're cutting. What I found was when I cut this, machine this, I put the vacuum up here and held it. It just sucked it right in. It's so light, it went right in. And it's really nice stuff to work with. That's amazing, that plastic. It is well worth the money. So I can get two out of this. And then what I'm going to do is I might pour a little round uh, in one of them little wee cups a piece. Let it get hard. In fact, I have one here. This one, for some reason, it's still like sticky. It might be the oil on it. It might be cleaned off. I didn't put oil on it. That's right. But maybe I left it too long. But I can clean it off with some alcohol, cut the stick off, drill it just to put it in there. Whenever I go to do the teeth, I could machine this flat and make it the same thickness as that to try it, to try my teeth and see how they're going to be. It could be a test piece. But so far, this uh, plastic, it's amazing. I really like it. So here you can see my gear flat on one side, has the nub, has a little bit undercut. Then here's what I made. 
has my number, a little bit of an undercut. It's to the right size, flat on this side. I just got to bore it out to that. Uh, and I'm going to put it in there on this. I stuck it in there just for a minute and just snugged it up good where I could have, you know, cut this. But I wanted to see how much this would run out. And it was out about five thousandths. So I think what I'm going to do is put it in here again like that, snug it up, then mark, put marks on there like which jaw I'm on so I can stay on the same because they're numbered one, two, and three. And then if one is high, maybe five thousandths, I could loosen it, slip in a little piece of paper, tighten it. I want to get this as true as I can. Five thousandths isn't much, but I'd like to have it perfect. So if I could put a little piece of paper in there, uh, you know, or a couple pieces put in there and get it right, you know, within one or two, perfect. Then uh, I can bore this out. I can lay out the keyway and cut it, and then all I'll have to do is put the teeth in, and that'll be later in the winter when I have time to get at this, take this system off and put my thing on there for cutting the tool come out really good. I'm really impressed with that plastic. Man, is that nice. It's blue there because I'd lay out dive when I found the center of that. But hard stuff. It should work. As long as I can get those cut. And I should be able to do that. One last note I'll leave you with is I was in a house eating supper tonight and I had the TV on. I'm watching the news. And uh, they come on there and they said, a study shows more men have heart attacks than women. And I'm thinking, well, men are married to women. Maybe that causes it. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> no, you know who told me that? I have a lot of subscribers and one that I became real good friends with and have a lot of fun with is Ron. Ron told me that. And I wouldn't lie. So, uh, you know, Ron's the one that told me. <laughs> no, Ron didn't tell me. Ron's probably sitting there watching this going, what? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> but I thought about it. It hit me like that. You know, more men have uh, heart attacks. <laughs> yeah, because they got to wait for the wife to get her purse, get all that stuff out of it. Uh, I got my wallet, my keys in my pocket, and I've talked about it before. I said, you you get up near the house and the wife, you know, she's like, well, I ain't got this. I can't, I can't find it. Zip this open. I ain't got, it ain't in there. Zip it. I can't find it. I don't know what I did with it. Then she opens a little thing and it's in there. It's like, man, oh man. <laughs> and her purse ain't that big. But what she pulls out of it, it's like, it's like the TARDIS. For Doctor Who, if you've ever watched that, he has a phone booth. He goes in it, and it's real big inside. It's bigger on the inside than the out, and they call it a TARDIS. So I think purses are our TARDISes in real life, because she can pull stuff out of there. I can't believe, <laughs> you know, the old thing where she pulls up. Do you have a, a man? I need a screwdriver. <laughs> she pulls a great big one out of a little wee purse. <laughs> She's pulling it and pulling it. I got a jackhammer in there too if you need one. <laughs> so I don't know. Oh, oh my god. So Ron <laughs> that made you listen. I was gonna come visit you someday, but you might not want to see me. <laughs> uh, so hang in there, good machining. Not much bike riding. It's not going uh, even up into the 50s, I don't think, for the next eight days. It's going to be in the 40s, uh, mid-40s maybe. One day might be close to 50, but that's about it. And uh, tonight, it's either tonight or tomorrow night, it's going below 30 again. I'm like, oh, here we go, winter, winter, winter. <laughs> uh, oh, me and a wife went to the bank today to drive through the one we always go to, and there's a woman there. And I said, uh, Happy Fourth of July. And she looked at me. I said, I canceled winter. I said, No winter. She goes, I like the way you think. <laughs> so when I went to leave, I said, Have a nice Christmas. <laughs> oh my God. I wish I could cancel winter. If it would get chilly and then go back, but what are you going to do?
I carry an EpiPen, so that's a good thing about it, is all the bees are dead. <laughs> I got stung twice this year. Oh, and that one hurt, them little hornets. Man, that sucker hurt. Wow. Wife got stung in the hand, and she's not allergic to them, and she said it hurt bad. It swelled up on her pretty good. Them little nasty things, I mean, they were so small, I thought, you know, they're, they call them a bite, but they're a sting. I thought, you know, it ain't that bad, probably. Oh, holy man, that thing hit me under the arm on the back here. Wow. Oh, I was jumping around everything. <laughs> uh, so, have a good day.